There's a lot of confusion amongst folks as to which one they should buy. And I just thought, we're sitting here, we just had some uh, venison burgers. Who better to ask than flip on venison? Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's, it's, it's not a simple, there's no simple answer to that, but I can tell you that it, it, it has to do with, it does have to do with marketing. I mean, in all companies that build something for sale, there's a marketing quotient that's involved. But at TFO, and I, I can speak for TFO, there is the philosophy of the Rod families mm -hmm. that they've really tried historically to stay with. And um, as to which one you would choose as an angler, I think to make the right choice, you have to let your ego wait in the other room while you make that choice. The basis for this philosophy business is that, you know, it, it goes back to what do you want to accomplish in a cast? And basically, it's, it's not like a golf swing, it's not like a tennis stroke, it's not, it's much simpler than that. You have two objectives. You, you have to develop line speed. Mm -hmm. And so line speed is very simply tip speed. The line can't go any faster or slower than the tip goes when you accelerate to a stop and unload the rod mm -hmm. in making a cast. So that's go, you know, you've got to have tip speed or line speed. And the only other thing you have to have is an efficient loop unrolling to deliver the fly to the target. That's all you have to have, an efficient loop, and it has to be traveling fast enough so that it stays aloft. To accomplish a cast, you have to accelerate and load the rod and then you have to stop the rod and allow it to unload to achieve that small efficient loop the tip has to be traveling pretty close to horizontal when you unload the cast or when you deliver the cast stop the rod and let the loop go and so that happens in a in a window um, and that window becomes bigger or smaller based on the philosophy of the design of the rod. Or maybe the rod action. The rod action. Yeah. That's okay. a better way to say it. Okay. So a fast <clears throat> action rod, like the Axiom 2 mm -hmm. or 2X, has a small window. The Mangrove Coast is specifically designed to have a bigger window. A smaller window is not better than a bigger window. Mm -hmm. It's just different. The cast is a little different. Um, but having that bigger window for someone who's not an accomplished fly caster, someone who doesn't absolutely <clears throat> know what his timing is, mm -hmm. that bigger window is a big help. To utilize that window and to get uh, line speed that you need to propel your loop, you have to begin that cast with the rod tip way back behind you. It's almost like throwing a ball. You wouldn't throw a ball from here. Right. You would throw a ball from there. Well, if, if your hand throwing a ball was the tip of the rod, you would want it to be back here when you make that throw. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. what you've taught me in breaking a wrist. After you stop the rod and form the loop, break your wrist and take the rod further back which which is one way which is one way to accomplish getting the rod tip back you break your wrist and look how far the tip goes back yeah and that's a legitimate way to cast mm -hmm. uh, there are other ways where you extend your arm back mm -hmm. lefties way where you run your arm back with your elbow on a shelf and then bring it forward on that same shelf yeah and don't break your wrist yeah blaine chocolate <clears throat> just talked about that in a video 
just previous to this, of talking about bringing the arm back like that. And it's a legitimate way to cast. It's not the way I cast, right. but it's a way to cast, and mm -hmm. it's a way a lot of people do cast. Yeah. But the point is that the cast has to begin somehow with the rod tip way back. Mm -hmm. And if you accomplish that by breaking your wrist, the first part of your forward cast has the tip coming up around an arc until you get to that window. Mm -hmm. And it is within that window if you drag the tip horizontally and then stop the rod and let it unload while the tip is still traveling horizontally, you get a small, tight, aerodynamic loop. Mm -hmm. And if you have moved the tip quickly enough, you get line speed. I mean, if you, the, 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 the loop of your cast, you should always think of as a report card. If that loop is going out there very slowly and it's lazy, the report card is telling you that you have no tip speed. Right. So you don't have to go, well, what do I do to get tip speed? Move the tip faster. <laughs> You'll get tip speed. Yeah. If your loop is this big or bigger, your report card, I mean, you're looking at your loop yeah. and it's terrible. It's telling you that your tip is not moving horizontally enough when you unload it and make the cast. Here's an interesting fact. If your rod tip leaves an imaginary horizontal plane this far when you make your cast, that's how big your loop will be. Not almost this big, precisely this big. So that if you make a cast and you see your loop is this big, you know you did a good job. Mm -hmm. But if your tip leaves this far, your loop is this big. If your loop le this far, your loop is this big. The loop should be talking to you all the time as you're false casting, telling you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. Yeah. You should either see that in your peripheral vision or actually be looking at it if you're training, practicing. Sure. Be actually be looking at your loop yep. and make corrections. Don't continue to make a terrible loop and go, well, when the stars align, my loop will get better. Yeah. It won't. So it's the wonderful thing is this is not a difficult process once you have an understanding of what's actually happening. You can fix yourself. Yeah. It's pretty easy, really. Easy. Yep. Now that's what Lefty always used to say, and we t teach folks in classes is to watch your watch your loops, watch your back cast, watch your loops for practice purposes. And then, of course, when you start fishing, you want to get it to the point where you don't have to watch your back cast and you can feel it. When I first started casting with Lefty, um, he he would tell me the same thing: watch watch your loops, yeah. and and then. Um, at one point, early on, he asked me, are you watching your loops? And I went, eh, you know, I'm not. And he went, if I was making those kind of loops, I wouldn't be watching them either. I think, <clears throat> I think Blaine Chocolate told us the same story. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, Lefty, Lef you know, Lefty always he told did. the same jokes over he, and he over did. again. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's some great advice. Uh, kind of back to the axiom 2X versus the mangrove coast. Is it safe to say, and I think you did say this, that the, the Axiom 2 has a much n shorter window and therefore probably going to be more for an intermediate to advanced fly caster. And this is going to, the Mangrove Coast is going to be a little more applicable for a wider range of casters. For sure. Okay. And I think it, it, it would be wrong not to say uh, that I believe that the faster action rod is capable of developing greater tip speed than the slower action. Okay. Uh, not that that's a deciding factor because you can develop plenty of line speed um, yeah. for fishing situations. But if you wanted to shoot loops through a screen door, I might choose a faster action. Right. Is it safe to say, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, is it safe to say that another thing you might say is that uh, to me, the Axiom 2X is a better rod for me for sight casting, sight fishing, 
um, when I'm not making as repetitive of casts all day and the mangrove coast might be better for making repetitive casts like when you're casting along mangroves for snook blind casting and you're just or bass fishing um, does that make any sense to you I, I don't know that I would say that I, I think um, you have to remember that <clears throat> when you're using one action as opposed to another your casting style does change. You're going to adjust. And so you do wind up adjusting, I yeah, think, yeah. is what happens. I, I, the mangrove coast is such a comfortable rod to cast. So the, the mangrove is such a comfortable, friendly rod to cast. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about timing. You can, you can relax a little bit. Yeah. Um, the, the, the axiom, you got to be on your toes, and there's a payoff. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you, I mean, that is such a friendly rod, that yeah. mangrove. It's, it's very comfortable. It's very relaxed. Like you said, you're, you're right. Yeah, you, if, you, if, if you're a good caster and you understand the mechanic, like you say, you're going to make adjustments to make either this rod or this rod work for sure i think if somebody's looking to buy the rod though and they're not they don't consider themselves an experienced caster and they don't know how to make those adjustments based on the rod the mangrove coast is maybe the better rod undeniably yeah, yeah. um and you're right it is just a very comfortable and, and that's i guess that's what i was getting at when you're when you're when you're just making casts all day and you're just putting flies up against the mangroves or up against the shorelines bass fishing all day long, this tends to be a, just a more comfortable, relaxed. No question about it. Uh, you may go home a little less tired at the end of the day than you would with that rod. The other thing I think about the mangrove coast, and this is so important for us in the Midwest, is I think it's a way better rod for throwing sinking tips and sinking style fly lines. <clears throat> Absolutely. It bends way deeper, mm -hmm. and it's actually easier to throw bigger loops with this rod, which is what you have to do with heads right. and uh, sinking lines. You're not trying to throw uh, an aerodynamic loop. You're really trying to lob something. Yeah. Um, so you're absolutely right. I think we've been pretty spot on in, in the shop and in, in selling these rods and selling the right rod to, to the right type of caster. Uh, but I know that we get that question a lot for our, our folks and our viewers and customers out there. Well, I so. would say that if you're a consumer thinking about buying any rods, any rods, whether they're TFO rods or some other rod, mm -hmm. don't kid yourself. I mean, be honest about your skills. Yeah. You'll be glad you did because you'll have the right tool. Yeah. Uh, somebody says, oh no, this rod is a faster rod than that rod. Doesn't matter. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, you can do everything with a slow rod that you can with a fast rod. You just do it differently. That's uh, it. And it's easier with a slower rod. Fact. So be honest. That's, that's fantastic information there and words of wisdom that you're also just not going to hear from a lot of the rod companies. I mean, they want you to believe that this action does this and this action does that. And like you just said, that's end of story. Um, so, well, thank you very much. And I'll also throw in a plug for a fly shop too. If you're looking to purchase a rod, again, whether it's TFO or any brand, call call or stop in a pro shop, a fly shop that knows what they're talking about. And if they're worthy, they're not going to just try to sell you something. I mean, Matter River Outfitters is not going to sell you an Axiom 2X if we don't think that it's the right rod for the job. And you might, you might be really surprised. The Mangrove Coast is quite a bit cheaper. And you might be really surprised that we're going to recommend the Mangrove Coast is the better choice for you. Um, and it's not about the money. It's about getting people the it's right. A better choice for me. For that customer. For <clears throat> oh, but not for me. No, 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 no. You, you can, you can cast anything. I've seen you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love them both. Yeah, we do too. And thanks for designing them. I know TFO appreciates it. I know our our fans out there appreciate 
uh, everything you do for the fly fishing industry and have done for the fly fishing industry. And uh, so there you have it, folks. Uh, TFO Axiom 2X, designed by Flip, and the Mangrove Coast, designed by Flip. Two fantastic fly rod options from our friends at TFO. Of course, you can find them at matteroveroutfitters.com. As always, we appreciate you watching. We appreciate Flip participating in uh, Mad River Outfitters and what we do. Be sure to subscribe. That helps us out. Hit the like button. That just makes us feel good. And uh, stay tuned because we've got a lot more coming at you.